Disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor or a specialist and you should consult a financial advisor before making any big purchase if you are unsure of the implications of the same. And that also includes leasing. Getting a new electric car in 2022 is a nightmare, regardless of if you are buying a new EV or if you are looking to nab a well-looked-after used one on the second-hand market. And I have talked at length before about how right now isn't the best time to get behind the wheel of a new EV, with automakers suffering limited production because of the ongoing chips and parts shortage. I have explained how the used car market is so inflated in its prices right now that five-year-old EVs with high tens of thousands of miles on the clock are going for the same price as some new models coming to market today. And that is before you even take into consideration the rising inflation and similarly rising auto loan rates. But what if you have just put down a deposit and waited patiently in line for a chance to get your new EV? What if you've had that call from your dealer and have been told that your brand new ride is ready for pickup? Do you lease? or do you buy? Today, I am going to go over both options, talk a little about my recent car buying experience, and tell you why I personally think that leasing a new EV today is a very, very bad idea indeed. But first... Lease or buy? It is a question that we all have to think about if we're lucky enough to be able to afford a brand new car. And for many going into an electric car for the very first time, it's possibly also the first time you've had to ask yourself that question. Because I know a pretty high percentage of new EV customers are people who are buying a new car for the very first time. I know, for example, that my first new car was an EV, although my partner did buy a brand new Prius a few years prior to that. I know Kate Walton Elliott's first new car was her family's Kia e Nero. And based on the conversations I've had with people who watch this channel, many of you scrimp and save for years in order to be able to get the deposit you need to buy that new EV. If that is the case for you, then you may also be considering leasing for the first time over buying. And both automakers and dealers make a pretty compelling argument for doing so. You agree to keep the car for two or three years, tell the dealership how many miles you think you'll be driving, and their finance person comes up with a lease quote that's always substantially smaller than the finance payment for buying the vehicle outright. Take a Tesla Model 3 rear-wheel drive as an example. Right now, at the time of filming this, it costs $48,490, including fees, to buy. Buying it outright with a $4,500 deposit and a loan for the rest, with an APR of 4.24% over six years, you are going to pay around $713 a month. But if you lease that same car with $4,500 down, plus another $5,700, 114 due at signing, and you'll be paying $519 a month for 10,000 miles per year for three years. As long as you have the extra money up front, that's for the deposit and that extra payment, it looks, on paper at least, like you're going to save a couple hundred bucks a month. Although you'll note that the lease figure is also a little sneaky because it adds an additional payment required at signing on top of the down payment. So I'm not comparing apples to apples. So if I fix that and put the same money as a down payment on a loan as the lease requires, which is $10,214, the finance quote from Tesla drops from 700 and some to $623. Yes, the lease is still, on a month-by-month -month basis, cheaper than purchasing, and you end up keeping the car for half as much time as you would if you purchased it. So it's no wonder that many people are leaning towards leasing, especially when buying their first EV, because you want to make sure that an EV is right for you. You don't want to be stuck paying a finance package on a vehicle 
that doesn't fit your lifestyle. And when the end of the lease comes up, you can either hand the car back, extend the lease, or maybe buy it outright without worrying about battery degradation or anything else, right? Well, no. In the last few months, as demand for cars has remained high and parts availability has remained low, we've started to see automakers remove lease buyout options from customer contracts. For some time now, if you lease a Tesla, you're not able to buy it at the end of the lease. And last week, Ford started the same practice with all of its electric vehicles. The reason is pretty simple. An electric car, and it's still rather costly battery pack, is worth much more to the automaker as a leased return vehicle than an internal combustion engine leased return vehicle would be. For a start, there's the asset of a used EV to sell on. And as I noted in the introduction, used EV prices are through the roof these days. An automaker who thinks it can sell a lease returned EV for far more than they would get from you buying out your lease is going to do everything it can to convince you to return the car at the end of the lease. And if that doesn't work, the automaker will force you to do it. Not only that, but a lease returned car that is then recertified by the automaker and put up for sale will command a higher price than a car that's got a similar mileage and specs on the open market because apparently the word certified adds a few grand to the sticker price, especially if it comes with a comprehensive warranty. But what I think most automakers really want to see is the concept of re-leasing, where a car is leased multiple times to different people during its lifetime. Volkswagen, for example, is readying itself to offer re-leasing options for EVs, which would allow customers to lease vehicles that were previously leased and then given a full bill of health in what amounts to a used car lease. You would have the same deal. You pay a down payment and a monthly lease fee for a specific number of miles or kilometers driven per year. And at the lease end, you would return the vehicle back to the automaker. But leasing a car twice also gets you to about a six year old car, which as it happens is about the amount of time when an automaker wants you to forget about that model and instead opt for the new shiny hotness instead. Battery packs and components from that six-year-old car can then be removed and recycled, and the automaker gets to recoup some of the costs associated with making the car in the first place. The battery packs are either then sent to second life projects or broken down into raw materials, and those raw materials then used to build new EV battery packs. And that's a great option that is far more environmentally responsible than digging up the new raw materials every time you want to build an EV. In short, leasing may still be the more affordable option to get behind the wheel of an EV, but you also shouldn't get attached to your car. Expect lease buyer options to slowly disappear as more and more automakers follow Tesla and Ford into the no buyout world, which is something that at one time was only the domain of limited production vehicles that automakers absolutely didn't want you to ever be able to keep. I'm talking about cars like the GM EV1, Honda Fit EV and BMW Active E. And to throw another spanner or wrench into the leasing process, remember that while monthly payments may be less than they would be for buying, you should prepare yourself for massive end of lease payments if you go over your promised mileage limit or you do anything other than drive your car to and from work in your Sunday best. In my personal experience with two leased vehicles, any marks inside or out will incur some pretty hefty fees from the dealership or leasing company. And you can easily burn through the several thousand saved dollars in end of lease damages and over mileage fees. Side note, I personally leased my Chevy Bolt EV and ended up buying out the lease after three years, not because it was financially cheaper to, because the loan was actually more than the lease, but because I knew I had several thousand dollars of overage charges due from excess mileage alone, and then another three thousand from the damage to the vehicle. And that's things like making modifications to the car. So don't even think about modifying your vehicle. That is most definitely a big no-no if you are leasing. At this point, I think it's pretty clear that I am pro buying your car. When EV battery packs were unknown and the technology was so cutting edge, you bled when you drove, leasing made sense. But these days, if the automaker and the technology you're buying into is well known and understood, buying does start to make more sense. 
In my recent experience buying our Ford F-150 Lightning Lariat, the interest rates for buying our truck were far better than leasing. That's because usually you can only lease from a handful of companies, but most financial institutions will be able to offer you a loan. And here in the US, credit unions are still offering incredibly impressive low rates on new EVs. I think with our local credit union, we managed to nab 2.7% if memory serves correctly. Buying a new EV outright is a little bit like buying a home. You have to pay more initially, but it also allows you to build equity through your car. And in places where incentives are available, you get to claim back those incentives. The downside though, is that unlike leasing, where normally the leasing company claims back the incentives on your behalf and just knocks it off your lease package, you may have a wait to claim your incentives back, especially if they're tax credits like you get in the US. You also have to be more certain that the car is what you want as making a six year purchase commitment is much, much different to making a three year lease agreement. And of course, you're going to usually have to wait a few years before you are in the black with your loan, where the value of your car as an asset is more than the amount outstanding on it. But while it's well known that vehicles depreciate the moment you drive them off the lot, that's no longer always the case in the current climate. We're seeing used vehicles with only a few thousand on the clock going for prices on the open market that are higher than MSRP. Even my Chevrolet Bolt is being advertised by the dealership I sold her to for more than I had to pay to get out of my lease two years and 30,000 miles ago. Right now then, I think if you can afford it, buying a car with a loan is a better way to go than a lease. And with automakers restricting lease buyouts, just think in a few years time, your purchased EV is going to be worth more on the used car market because there will be fewer privately owned vehicles available. I think that is a pretty good incentive to buy rather than lease, especially if you want everybody to be able to make the transition to an electric vehicle. Final thoughts, if you are trading in another car for your new EV, always shop around for the best used car deals. My Bolt EV was given a terrible trade-in price at the Ford dealership because they wanted to make a profit on the trade-in rather than on my truck, which they sold to me at MSRP. Meanwhile, a local used car specialist was more than happy to give me a much more sensible offer that I ultimately accepted. And if you are going to buy a new car, you should also consider investing in ceramic coating or paint protection film. While modern automotive paints are more environmentally responsible than paints of days gone by, they're not as hard wearing. A ceramic coating and or PPF can really help protect the investment you are about to make, which will ensure you get as much for your car as possible when it does finally come time to sell it on. That's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. And if you really like this video, why not leave us a super thanks? It is super easy to do and everything you send goes towards helping us make great content. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and to our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire crew, go out to everyone who makes TE possible. That includes everyone who supports us on Patreon and YouTube. And if you are a supporter at the charged up level, you'll see your name right here on my right. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Chris Maxwell, Pedro Muro Pinheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett, Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Greta Jehota, Brophy Wolf, Tazlet in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Jim Burness, Chris Asenta, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde. And of course, super out of this world thanks to our Starman supporters, Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Rory Litwin, Joe Bresney, Redar, JP Fagerbuck, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and Ian.
If you would like to be part of the amazing list of supporters, you can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube or show us your support through Ko-fi or by buying some cool swag from our swag store. And if you are unable to support us financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it really does make a difference to our channel's ad revenue and also to our exposure. More eyeballs is a good thing. Thanks for watching and as always, keep evolving.